Hi everyone, it's Darren, and today I'd like to talk about adding an E-unit to the burrow crane since the burrow crane is unable to reverse directions remotely. The E-unit gives the operator control over the direction of travel for a Lionel diesel or steam engine with the main transformer. It's an incredibly clever electrical mechanical device that operates simply by applying and removing track power. During the post-war era, Lionel used two types of E-units a two-position E-unit and a three-position E-unit. Functionally, the two E-units behave slightly differently. The two-position E-unit has two states of operation, forward and reverse. The three-position E-unit has, you guessed it, three states of operation, forward, reverse, and idle. The idle state allows the operator to apply track power without having the engine move in either a forward or reverse direction. I'd like to go over the differences in more detail. My display here is a bit busy, but let's see if we can make it through without losing anyone. On the left hand side, I'm trying to show how the two position E unit works. On the right hand side, I'm trying to show the same information for a three position E unit. The leftmost column is what you, as the train operator, do with the transformer. The rightmost column is what you see occur on your train layout. The two inner columns are what occur behind the scenes. So let's say your engine has a two position E unit installed. Your transformer is currently off. The track does not have power and let's say your E unit is in the reverse state. Your engine is currently stationary. Then you turn on your transformer. The track now has power the E unit moves to the forward state and as a result you see your engine move forward. Then you turn your transformer off, track no longer has power, your E unit stays in the forward state but your engine is now stationary since you no longer have track power. Then you turn your transformer on, you now have track power, the E unit moves to the reverse state and you see your engine move in the reverse direction and when you remove track power you go back to this first state and the whole process starts over again. Now let's say your engine has a three position E unit installed. Your transformer is currently off. You have no track power and we will say your E unit is in the reverse state. Your engine is currently stationary and not moving on the track. Then you turn your transformer on. You now have track power. The E unit moves to the idle state and your engine does not move. You then turn off your transformer. The track no longer has power. The E unit stays in the idle state. Once again, your engine is stationary. You then turn your transformer on. The track now has power. The E unit moves to the forward state and you see your engine move in the forward direction. You then turn your transformer off track no longer has power, your E unit is still in the forward state, your engine is stationary. You then turn your transformer on, the track now has power, your E unit moves to the idle state. Once again, your engine is stationary. You then turn your transformer off, your track no longer has power, your E unit stays in the idle state, and your engine is stationary. You then turn your transformer on. Your track now has power. The E unit moves to the reverse state and you see your engine move in the reverse direction. And then this whole process starts over. What's important to note is this row and this row in the three position E unit does not exist in the two position E unit. Your transformer is on, you have track power, but your engine is not moving. And in the two position E unit, this does not exist. As a real world example, let's run a Lionel engine containing a three position E unit. Here we have our engine with the cab taken off. Here's the motor, here's the E unit, and we'll run through all the E unit states.
As mentioned earlier, the three position E unit is an electromechanical device. I've seen them referred to as rotary sequence switches, and while that may seem like a mouthful, it's actually a very good description. The E unit consists of electrical contacts, a rotating drum, a pawl, and a solenoid. Every time the solenoid is activated, the pawl is lifted up and the drum rotates. The solenoid is then returned to its original position by either a spring or gravity. The drum and the electrical contacts essentially behave like two single pole triple throw switches. With this setup, Lionel's engineers were able to create the powered idle state and more importantly were able to direct currents in the stator and the rotor to allow the engine's motor to rotate in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. The repair manual has diagrams showing how the unit directs currents to accomplish all of this. The diagrams are a combination of two-dimensional schematic for the motor and three-dimensional drawing for the E-unit. The diagrams leave a lot to be desired, so I've rigged up a circuit to simulate the drum and the electrical contacts of the E-unit. So here's my home-brewed E-unit. I've included the electrical contacts, there's a total of six of them, and I've included the rotating drum. The drum is the part of the E-unit that determines which state the E-unit is currently in. My homemade E-unit is using metal duct tape to create the proper states. The Lionel E-unit uses copper. Here in the lower center of the screen, I have a breadboard, which I'm using to represent our motor. The top half of the breadboard represents the rotor or the armature windings. The lower half of the breadboard represents the stator or the field windings. As for the circuit, I'm using LEDs to show the direction of current in each of the windings. Not to give anything away, if the E-unit does its job, we should see an unpowered motor during the idle states and the direction of current change in the armature windings between the forward and reverse directions. Likewise, we should also see the field windings powered during the forward and reverse states. So for this demonstration, I'm going to leave the power supply on the entire time and I'm simply going to rotate the drum of the E-unit and go through all of its states. You'll currently notice none of the LEDs are on for our mocked up motor. This is because we're currently in the idle state. Now we're in either a reverse or forward direction. Uh, let's just say, for sake of argument, we're in a reverse direction. Now we're back in the idle state. Now we're going forward. Back to idle. Reverse. Idle. Forward again. And I think now we're back to our original idle state. As can be seen, the stock Lionel E unit is rather large, and the space inside the burrow crane is small, the majority of which is taken up by the stock motor. I won't be able to use the stock E unit, so my plan is to design an electronic E unit. From a feature set standpoint, I think the electronic E unit will need to be able to detect when there's track power and when there's not track power. It will need to be able to remember what the current state of the E unit is. It will need to know the order of the states for the E unit. Furthermore, for each state, it will need to know whether or not the motor needs power, and if so, which direction the train needs to move. There are a variety of solutions to this conundrum. For the smarts of the E unit, and by smarts, I mean the memory related functions, uh, such as knowing what the states are and what to do in those states. I plan on using a microcontroller. For detection of track power, I plan on using an opto isolator circuit. And finally, for directing power to the burrow motor, I plan on using an H bridge integrated circuit. Now I can already tell you have two questions on your mind. The first being, why aren't I using relays to direct power to the motor? The short answer is, relays are going to be bigger than the H bridge integrated circuit. Now I may have to revert to using relays. Another possibility is to use triacs. As a quick note, if I do use an H-bridge integrated circuit, 
I will be controlling the burrow's motor with direct current, not alternating current. And the second question being, how do I plan on running the microcontroller when there's no track power? My current plan, subject to change, is to use what's known as a supercapacitor to store enough energy while there's no power to the track and yet still run the microcontroller. Now if that doesn't work, I'll likely use some sort of battery technology, whether it's just a simple watch battery or maybe I'll use a lithium ion technology. I haven't decided if I'll go into the nitty gritty details of the circuitry for the electronic e unit. But if I do, I'll make specific videos related to those topics. And with that, I need to get back into the lab to see if I can make this work.